Using artificial intelligence is just a natural step in the evolution of the legal profession. You want to use reliable, secure forms of it. Welcome to Hot Docket, the show where we talk about winning marketing strategies that have built the most successful law firms. Join us every two weeks for the latest trends and tactics to grow your law firm. Hey, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking to Eric Baum, the founder of Paratech, a remote deposition platform for attorneys, to go over his tech platform that he's built to enable attorneys to conduct remote depositions. We talk everything from the marketing and the sales of it all the way through to what it means to balance your work, your family, everything you've got going on. We're going to learn about some of the changes in the remote deposition space and how that's impacting lawyers on both the defense and billable hour side all the way to the plaintiff side. I'm very excited for you folks to listen today. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Thank you so much for having me. It's very nice to see you guys, Bobby Andrew. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to I'm excited to join you guys today. Awesome. So I think I'd be remiss if I didn't start by just asking, you know, why do you get started? You're a trained lawyer. What made you jump into uh, building a tech platform? So I was a right out. I went to University of Miami for law school. Um, was always interested in stopping bad people that were hurting other people, hurting kids particularly. I volunteered in Haiti after the earthquake. I lived down in Port-au-Prince for like six, seven months. And just being at the hospital there, experienced and saw some really terrible things. Kids, women, girls, they're being taken advantage of because of the, the terrible infrastructure there. Went to law school to try to hold people accountable that were doing bad things to innocent people. Um, started, got internships at the prosecutor's office, in homicide division, human trafficking and knew that I wanted to be a, a sex crimes prosecutor for a long time. And so I went to the Palm Beach County State Attorney's Office with Dave Ehrenberg, Adrian Ellis, all wonderful leaders, and worked my way up to the Special Victims Unit. I was prosecuting internet crimes against children, trafficking cases, and sex crimes. What, what made you think that this was the right move? My whole trajectory, the whole life, everything I've always wanted to do was helping people um, and, and making things better. And so after about seven and a half, eight years there, my brother, who's a tech entrepreneur, has started a lot of different companies, was very successful, you know, asked me one day, he said, what is the most, and this is the same question that I ask anybody else that asks, you know, how do you start a company? What do you, what's the first step? The question he asked me was, what is the most inefficient part of your practice of law? What can be made much better through technology? While I was the special victims unit, the major case I was working on required the review of dozens of hours of audio and video um, phone calls and the onus falls on the lawyers and the police officers to review those files because it is so expensive and the turnaround is so long to get a reliable transcript back from traditional old school legacy court reporters the burden falls on these highly trained professionals to be doing transcribing uh, and so it's some, in, in some cases, right, for police officers at the expense of the taxpayers, you know, because these officers are putting in overtime to just transcribe recordings. So the answer, which is staring me in the face, very much so in the sense of a stack of CDs on my desk, is if there was a way to get highly accurate transcripts of, of recordings of legal proceedings in a cost efficient manner, it would really be a game changer. And so that was the start. My dream was always to be a prosecutor, you know, state level and then hopefully federal level. And uh, this was just a side project at the time. My son, uh, who was seven at the time, was diagnosed with cancer, and it caused me to take on a, a completely different life path. It was right in, in the hot spot of COVID. Um, you know, when, when, when we pick a jury on a sex case, you're talking about you know 90 to 100 person veneer. And so uh, you, I just could not be in a room with that many people um, at that time. And it caused me to make just a very difficult choice. You know, something I've always been passionate about, something I always wanted to do for the rest of my career. Um, and I had to take on a different path that would allow me to work from home and be there for my family. And so something that was just a side project at the time, um, you know, with my brother and a, and another excellent software engineer who specialized in machine learning, natural language processing turned into what is now like a major national company. Yeah. So. I can't imagine that happening. And, you know, it really speaks, I think, to your character to be able to turn that into something so amazing right? With Parrot, what you've recently passed 14 million in total raised yeah. capital. Yeah, that's correct. 14 million. And we're working with four soon to be a fifth national insurance carrier. You know, I, I like to think of it. I like to think of it a lot in terms of like Uber and taxis. Um, you know, the, the old school style of, of doing things 
Um, I think that as lawyers, the blame lies on us because the normal workflow, right, with core reporting is that you have a reporter that's present for your deposition or for your hearing. You pay hundreds of dollars in the state of California, you're paying thousands of dollars for them just to show up, right? And then, but you get nothing in return. The only way you get something in return, right, is if you spend another 500 to a thousand dollars on a certified transcript. It's just the way the world has been forever and it's extremely inefficient. And so what we theorize and what has come to fruition is that if you can provide a very accurate way, right, someone can still order a certified transcript with the core reporters we provided at a position. But what we discovered, right, is that if you can provide a very accurate way to get a, a, a rapid, accurate transcript, um, it saves, a tr saves attorneys a tremendous amount of time and in most cases, a lot of money. And it just was not something being done. Um, there have been a couple of the people that have, have sort of copied our, our way of doing things since, but you know, we were really sort of first to market um, at doing this kind of thing, so, like purely with technology. So for you, is this really a tech problem or is it a people problem? Like, do you think that the harder part of what you're trying to do is build this technical solution to a difficult problem? Or is it trying to get attorneys to buy in to a new way of doing things? It's a combination, right? So um, it's a numbers game in a sense that you, and the current state of the law, right, you, you will absolutely need a certified if you want to use a, a, a testimony, right, from a deposition or hearing or trial in court, it needs to be done by a reporter, right? And that needs to have human eyes on it. However, the way that industry standard and custom has led us to believe is that the only way to get a record of the testimony is that certified transcript, a reliable record of the testimony is that certified transcript. And it's simply not true, right? We, I don't mean to phrase as you can, we did develop sophisticated enough technology that you can get a, a like a 97% accurate transcript right, within 90 minutes of your deposition ending that is synced up to the audio video of the depot. And it's cost efficient. Um, and again, it, it, it's for work product, right? If you're going to be introducing it at trial, you're still going to get a certified transcript by the reporter we provide. But the goal is that the typical turnaround time for a, a certified transcript with any other legacy vendor, right, is going to be 10 business days. 10 business days turns into like, depending on when you do it, it's like 14 days, 15 actual days. And so that is, you take like 10 days to 10 to 15 days from when you can get started, you know, on your work, on the results of that proceeding. And we shorten that to, 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 to 90 minutes. And so it's, you know, it's certainly an uphill battle in the sense that some attorneys are, a lot of attorneys will say, well, I've always done it this way. Uh, it's certainly about, you know, not necessarily re-educating, but sort of evolving the workflow. Um, because people don't like change, especially someone that's been practicing law for a long time. I like to flip sort of this analogy that I've heard a lot. People say like the enemy of, you know, the enemy of good is great. I like to flip it around because I think in our case, it's like the enemy of great is good or good enough. And so in a lot of circumstances, we will talk to prospective clients. They'll be like, I mean, I've done it this way for 20 years. I've been working with Judy, you know, or Jim, my core reporter for 20 years. You know, yeah, they can't handle a lot of volume. Yeah, you know, it's just a piece of paper they're sending me. Um, but, you know, it's not broken. It's not bad enough that I have to do. It's not fantastic. It's not great, but it's good. Like, it's good enough for what I need. And so here I am on the other end of the, you know, the, the line or the Zoom call saying, we're syncing your transcript for you, right? Something normally that is charges th costs thousands of dollars. Every depot is going to be on video, normally something that's 150 to 200 an hour. Um, you're getting it in 90 minutes, which if you ordered a transcript from a, a traditional court reporter, same day. To circle back to your question, right? It was, is it a technology problem? Is it a human problem? I would certainly say that there's a re-education that needs to happen in terms of what's possible via attorneys through technology. There's certainly right now um, some trepidation as far as because you have attorneys that are, you know, in the news, it's, it's not uncommon to see some attorney has used chat GPT to look up case law and there's, you know, hallucinations in there. And so it, it's a human, it's a human problem and a technology problem. I don't get it. Like, I wish I could talk to those attorneys. I've seen, you know, their ex explanations, right? When you have these state bar disciplinary hearings and they're like, why did you do it? And the reasons are crazy right there. I think in the one Avianca case, which is the first time it happened, the answer was like, I forget if it was Westlaw or Lexus, but he's like, my uh, subscription lapsed and I just needed to, like, I just needed to get some cases. And it's like, why it doesn't, you know, it's a human problem because you're not doing the diligence. I mean, the, what's necessary to do is just the standard amount of diligence that you would use with any with any service provider. You, you know, I'm an attorney. So you ask the question, you know, you ask the question, is it a technology problem or a human problem? And the answer is, you know, it depends. <laughs> I mean, tell me which client or prospective client you're asking about and I can tell you. I, I love that. The enemy of the great is the good. Yeah, that that is a great line. And I think it goes to show that education is sometimes the biggest barrier to a sale. 
kind of sold us on the benefits of remote deposition and all the technology that's going into it. If you looked from a high level right now, what percentage of depositions are done remotely that are tech enabled versus the more traditional way? I can say without much doubt that it is above 90%. It's probably more around 95% of depositions right now are being done remotely. You have to remember that most cases, there are some cases where people, you know, they say, I want to see the whites in their eyes. I want to make them sweat. And, and some old school attorneys that still want that. But the benefits of doing a remote deposition, you know, number one, you're getting video. Number two, you know, especially if it's something like out of state or a federal case, you know, multi-district litigation, you're, you know, it kills your whole week. If you have, to, you know, you're in Florida and you have to go out to California or, or even New York, right, for a depot. I mean, you're talking about losing an entire day of work. You're talking or multiple days of work. So you're away from your family. You're you're you're, you're away from your actual work, um, as opposed to sitting in your office and just doing it for an hour or two. I, I'm I'm not going to say that there aren't some depositions right that you want to be in the room with someone for, but for I would say again for probably 95, 97 percent of cases, there is only the benefit, only significant benefit to doing it remotely because of all the functionality that you have. Being in the legal tech space, are there any other big problems that you see that aren't uh, depositions? With technology, <laughs> there's plenty of problems attorneys have in general, you know, around, you know, as far as the profession goes, you have like, uh, you know, overuse of substances. I think that you have a lot of, you have a lot of objections and the relationship between attorneys is not great overall, especially in the civil side. But, you know, as far as technology, I think that what you're going to see and, and what the literature shows is you're always going to need attorney's judgment. You know, this is Chief Justice Roberts, right? He just issued his year-end opinion for 2023. And he talks a lot about artif artificial intelligence in there. And what he talks about is that, you know, using artificial intelligence for some of these tasks is just a natural step in the evolution of the legal profession. And the same thing with the internet. It's just, it's a new technology tool. And just like any technology tool, you want to use reliable, secure forms of it. But again, I'm giving you a long-winded answer. I'm giving you an attorney answer, a non-answer to your question of what new technology tools. You know, there's a lot of push right now on the case management platform side. Um, I went to Legal Week last year, the downtown Hilton in New York City. There was like three floors of their ballroom full of case management platforms. And so it's very hard, I think, to differentiate um, between them. When I know the common problems that the, that a that a case management platform I like called Zen Case is doing is, you know, the tracking billable hours, you know, a, a big portion, a big problem, right, that most attorneys find is that at the end of the year, at the end of the month, right, you're having to backtrack and figure out what you worked on and start adding up and tracking your billable hours. And so what I think this tool does, right, is it's like passive tracking. It's passive tracking of your billable hours, syncing all the different through email, through Outlook, through all the different tasks you're working on. And it knows, right, it knows you're within a case. It knows what you're working on. It knows what you're looking up in legal research. And so it's tracking that for you. We will always need lawyers and, and judges are lawyers, but of course, but their judgment, right? But there are a number of tasks, particularly when it comes to like doc review, you know, in discovery and big cases, you have tens of thousands of documents. And the traditional way of doing it is you have an army of people that is like reading these for what's relevant, for what needs to be turned over, for what's privileged. You just really have a more, much more accessible uh, on a cost side and a time saving side forms of technology that are capable of document review that are reliable. So I think we're going to see tasks that typically take attorneys, right, many hours that, that don't necessarily require a high level of judgment start getting automated. That's super interesting. So you brought up Legal Week and how there were tons of case management softwares. You walked us through how when you were practicing, you had literal CDs on your desk and everything is shifting to becoming quicker and easier to do and a lot more organized. Is that something you all are working on right now or does it already exist? Yeah, that's a great question. So the old school way of doing things right is that the court reporter would email you the transcript. And for us, like, that's problematic from a security, privacy, confidentiality side, you know, because your court reporter is sending it to you, you know, like from their hotmail address or their, you know, their AOL. I can't tell you how many court reporters still have those kind of email addresses, you know, so we store them attached to a case record on a SOC 2 certified encrypted platform that has all the necessary uh, precautions and privacy and confidentiality. When you're creating a case with us, it's not just a lot of court reporting companies have it where it's like, here's your repository of transcripts, right? You can just, here it is. It's, you can double click it and download the PDF of it. Um, and so that is just in line with the evolution of the entire practice of core reporting, which has always been, here's what you, the standard product is, is a, a paper transcript. That's just always what you get for thousands of dollars. There's so much more we can do with technology. And so in line with that, right, is that 
when you're working with us, it's not just a PDF of a transcript. Like it is a synced audio video file with the transcript that you can cut clips off, cut clips with, you can highlight, write notes, tag, tag your colleagues, um, you know, compare testimony across all of discovery. You know, you'll get notifications, for example, whether part of someone's testimony conflicts with documents and um, images and files that are in discovery. If, you know, for example, someone testifies that they were, you know, wearing their seatbelt, but the citation says they were not wearing their seatbelt, like you'll get notified. There's like a level of analysis here uh, that is far reaching and far beyond what a, a legacy core reporting vendor um, is doing. In regards to are we like integrating with other case management platforms, the offer has come up. It's just about finding the right one because there's a big benefit to being selective about who you partner with, like getting that like exclusivity with a specific partner. But that is a huge piece of it, right? If you can be a one-stop shop, put it all in one place, then that's ideal. Eric, I'm going to switch things up a little bit here because I know, you know, one of our primary purposes in this podcast is really giving other lawyers a sense of how to market, how to sell, some ideas, some strategies, sharing that knowledge. So this is going to be a little bit distinct because you're a little bit closer to us where you're more like B2B. You're selling to other lawyers. But sure. I'm still curious, like, have you found any strategies that you've seen to be especially successful in your sales process? As far as selling and what has worked, you really have to tailor the talk track and what part of your software that you're communicating, depending on the individual. It can morph and it can evolve the way you're talking to somebody. And it's really about being an active listener and just being empathetic to what the pain points are. For some attorneys, right, it's that I'm using this company and they're awful. Um, we've used them forever. I don't know who else to use. It's a pain in the butt to switch, to have a huge organization, to have everybody switch is gonna be a pain, but it just has to happen. Uh, you know, they're messing with our invoices, they're messing with our scheduling, they're unreliable. So we need somebody new. It's all about is like, what are the pain points that they're communicating? When you look at whether it's an insurance carrier or a company, they're very worried about costs. They have hundreds of thousands or millions of cases a year, and they're responsible for the costs. If you look at the plaintiff side, they have to communicate why things cost a certain amount to their clients. But plaintiff's attorneys, right, for the most part, are passing off that bill to their clients and aren't going to be personally responsible for it. A lot of it is about understanding who at your prospective customer or your existing customer, not only is a decision maker, right, but also what their pain points are and why they want to switch or why they should switch. And a lot of it comes from just listening, you know, actively listening and what the right questions are to ask to discover what they want to do. Nobody likes being pitched to or sold unless you're like going, unless you're like on Shark Tank, right? And they get paid to sit there. When someone calls you, right, and someone is like, can you donate money to this cause or can you... Um, I want to tell you about this new thing we came up with. You're like, I'm in a meeting, I'm busy, send me an email about it. I think we all probably get out of dozens of emails a day where it's like, I want to partner with you. I want to pitch to you. I want to talk to you about this service or this software, or this product. And in most cases, we don't even look at it. It's really just about doing diligence ahead of time and actively listening during that opportunity to speak to the person about what the pain points are and how do you get their business. If you can communicate well enough, right, you'll get that answer. And sometimes you have to know, like, again, like kind of when to walk away. There are some where it's like, it's just persistent, no matter how persistent you are, you may not be able to get to it, but you will have the opportunity to leave a good impression and circle back and, you know, a year from now, six months from now and get it. Yeah. That idea of active listening is universal. People don't want to be sold something they don't need. Listening to the pain problems and finding those opportunities where you actually add value is, I think, universal. More and more companies and carriers are having to like reduce their staff. And so just this idea of doing more with less, it's on with a lot of people. I think I already know your answer to this based on what you just said, but looking at your brand and how you currently acquire clients, do you focus all of your marketing and sales on uh, inbound where, because you have a great product, a lot of folks are coming to you, or have you also had an outbound team that directly solicits attorneys and shows them the benefits of your product? It's a great question. We do have both. We have outbound that are being proactive. They're out in the market at conferences, at trade shows, um, attorney organizations, paralegal organizations that are out there and are actively pitching, actively pitching the company. But certainly a huge part of the legal sector, right, is social proof, right, is referrals, um, is building that trust. Because attorneys, I've found as a species, uh, they don't, they want to trust, right? They, 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 want, they only want, really want to use someone that, unless you're, they're being forced, right? By their supervisor, or by their, their higher ups to do something. They really only like doing, working with someone or working with a service or software that they trust. Referrals within the legal community are extremely important. Getting someone to legitimately buy in um, and be a champion and to vouch for your software 
is extremely important. The warm, welcome intro is so much more beneficial and so much more likely to be successful than a cold email or a cold call. And that goes, that just goes to how you treat people and um, what your relationships and interactions with them have been like, where your reputation, your reputation within the community is extremely important. Um, you know, if you're known as someone that is not going to be truthful or not going to be reliable or not going to perform or produce results, then, um, a lot of times attorneys will say, you know, who else is using you, right? Who can I call to find out, to find out if, if I can trust your service or trust you. So having those references, having people being reliable, being on time, being trustworthy, producing results, all that is extremely important as a general principle though. And I think this is true for any kind of sales work is that referrals inbound and warm intros are much more likely to be successful than cold outbound. That makes sense. Do you want to tell our listeners what events you're going to be at this year? Do you have them planned out? We don't currently have them planned out. What, what I will say is that trade shows and conferences are, are extremely important um, just to get your name out into the ether. Even if at the first conference or the second conference, the same people go to the same conferences every year. And so even if it's the first conference or the second conference that you don't get someone's attention or don't get it, you know, exposure is extremely important. And so that's, I think, one of the ways that I know that we want to do better because of how excellent, you know, Mean Pug is and the team that you have, marketing and outbound and all that is certainly something that we'd like to leverage more. With all the stuff that you've got going on, you've got the business, you've got the family, everything. How do you balance it? You know, sort of classically trained attorneys have this mentality, right, that you always have to respond to that email to the client no matter what time it's at. You know, you could be in the middle of dinner, you could be putting your kids down, someone, you know, an email comes in and you have to absolutely respond to it. Um, and so a lot of it is just reprioritizing. Your family always comes first. In addition to that, right, if you're not at peace in your mind, you're not going to be able to perform well. You're not going to get your best results at work. That's not to say that, you know, there will always be stressful cases. There are trial, trials and hearings. We'll all, you know, getting memos out on big cases will always be stressful. For me, uh, you know, exercise is a huge way that I center myself. I, lifting weights my entire life, played football and, and lacrosse in high school and college. Um, lately, just a lot of pickleball, a lot of tennis which I found lost a ton of weight, you know, got a lot healthier, been to the doctor recently, cholesterol, blood pressure all lower. But it's always like that you have to really embrace that work will never be the most important thing in your life. You have to like truly embrace that like when stuff's going on with your family, when stuff's going on with your mental health, whatever it may be, you have to, you should, and you need to, and you have to prioritize that. Work will always be there. I've been in jobs like where I thought that, I thought I was like, you know, I'm irreplaceable. Um, it's extremely important for me to be here. What's going to happen here if I'm gone? And there's always somebody you know, when I was at the state attorney's office, I, I was so passionate and I loved that work so much. Um, and, and the person that ended up taking my spot after I left is a very good friend of mine. And, you know, to be honest, she's doing an unbelievable job. Um, and so the work will always be there. Part of that too is growing and building and forming relationships with a really good team around you, um, which is knowing, right, that if you do need to step away for a family reason or a personal reason, or you need to take time for it, that you have someone that has your back, that will communicate with the client, that will help you on a project, that will help with the research, whatever it may be. We are trained as attorneys that the client is always right. No matter what time it is, you have to respond to the client's question. Um, just the classic way of doing things. You just don't need to. You, you can prioritize your family. You absolutely can prioritize your family. 100% with you. And I, I, you know, I think for attorneys, that's an especially prescient problem, but it's true for our business. It's true for pretty much anything that's relying on a billable hour, just being able to step away and find some way to balance yourself for you. That's exercise for others. It might be yoga or art or whatever it might be, but I think that's really good advice. I want to wrap up here, Eric, with a word association game. I'm going to just give you a word and you're going to spit back the first thing that comes to your mind. Mean pug. Mean, mean right, 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 mean right, right. Pug. Excellent word. All right, here we go. First word, journey. Children. Florida. Hot. Lawyers. Need to embrace technology. <laughs> Sales. Relationship-based. Law school. Worth it for some, not for others. Pug. Mean. Parrot. The future. Love it. All right, that's it. That's the word association game. Eric, this was a great chat. I, I learned a ton. I really appreciate you coming out to join us today. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would be remiss if I didn't, and I've said it, but didn't give, didn't give a huge shout out to, to Mean Pug um, and obviously to you, Bobby and Andrew, not just for having me, but just for being really just a fantastic and an excellent software and, and service provider. I love having you guys, not only just the work that you do, but the re your reputation in the community is second to none and well-respected. Um, and of course, everyone I know that, that 
as uses you as well, absolutely loves using you and has seen excellent results. So um, I would be remiss again if I left this podcast without giving you guys a shout out. We appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Eric. And um, everybody, go out and check it out. Check out Paratech. Embrace technology. Don't be scared of it. And we'll see you on the next episode. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Hot Docket. We're your hosts, Bobby and Andrew, founders of MeanPug, the marketing agency for ambitious law firms. Have questions about marketing or anything we covered today? Email us at clark at meanpug.com. Be sure to subscribe to learn more.